you know, I'm not a big believer in, in, in fate. I kind of believe in making your own fate. But at the same time, I think there are some things that you just kind of look at and go, oh, that is interesting how the thought was there early and the thought resumed and then the thought went away and then it came back and next thing you know, I'm in the, in the Navy. Welcome to Shields Hometown Heroes. Shields Hometown Heroes is a way for us to say thanks to those that serve our country and our community. And are still giving back to others today. We honor your service by sharing your stories. From all of us at Shields, thank you for your service. Hi, this is Joe Preisner over at the Appleton Shields. We just wanted to congratulate Patrick Durkin. He's our Shields Hometown Hero winner. Uh, a big thank you to you, Patrick, for all your service and all you've done for the outdoors. The Navy trained me as what's called a hull maintenance, maintenance technician, hull maintenance technician and for short, they call it, called me an HT. And basically what I was trained in was, was firefighting, damage control, and also a lot of trade skills. It was, um, I learned you know, welding, pipe fitting, sheet metal work, um, car some carpentry work, really good, good training for a, a life. I knew he was a locksmith in the Navy. Every time we like, locked a door mistakenly, he knew how to pick it or get into things. Just always had a lot of pride for, for being in the Navy. We occasionally have told our war stories, although neither one of us was in any situation even resembling a war, but yeah, comparing the Navy stories that Pat has and the Army stories that I have. What was kind of fascinating for me after a couple of years in the Navy out, out in the fleet and actually working a, a lot in, in those skills was I realized I wasn't very good at it compared to most of the guys who, who were around me, where I could, I could, um, I could make a weld, but now, mine was never as, as pretty and as, as help, didn't hold together as well as a lot of the other guys. And I started to realize that these trades I've learned probably aren't some things that are going to carry me through my life as a, as, a, um, as a skilled worker. One of the greatest things the Navy did for me was teach me what I wasn't good at. What I learned on my own by writing home a lot to, to my parents, friends, and family, I kept hearing from various friends and family that they'd never seen me write before. And they said, you know, I like the way you write. I knew that jobs back then in journalism um, were hard to get because so many people were in journalism back then. You know, it was after the Watergate era, everyone wanted to be the next Woodward and Bernstein, you know. So I, for me, it was because that's the one thing I thought I could do. I, was, I thought I was good at it and I liked, even then I liked interviewing people and meeting people and talking to them and getting their stories and, and writing about it. We had a lot of common interests, deer hunting being one of the major ones. At the time, I was co-owner and editor of Deer and Deer Hunting magazine. And eventually, probably 10 years after we first met, I ended up hiring Pat Durkin for the staff of the magazine, and he was more or less taking over a lot of the editing duties that I had been doing. I like all the debates that go on in the hunting and conservation arena, the fishing arena. Those things just interest me naturally, so it's just, it really fit for me. And there were times where maybe in one article he'd be criticizing an individual or an organization or a government agency. And maybe a month later, if it was warranted, he'd be praising that same person, organization or agency. So he was always real fair-minded, I felt. Well, one of the things that I like about my dad's writing, um, because I, growing up in Wisconsin, I have a lot of friends who hunt and fish. I think he really brings in a perspective that some regular outdoorsmen or women don't have. Um, brings a little bit more nuance, more education to it, more science. The thing I have gotten the confidence in over the years is that a certain topic might not interest me going in, but I always believe that if you really are a good reporter, you'll, you'll do your best to understand this to the point where you can communicate it to people in a way that they find compelling. I think he brings in just a different perspective that teaches people more about conservation and why we hunt and why it's good and why we can eat um, you know the fish and animals that we shoot it's not just the 
redneck Wisconsin thing at all. He just really can educate people in a smart way about conservation and hunting and fishing.